congratulations on, on, um, on your movie. And I really like your job there. It's really amazing. Thank you. So, how's Mexico treating you so far? Good. We haven't it's seen like very much. Uh, yeah, we've just been in the hotel. It, I mean, it is not the first time that you come to Mexico, to, to Mexico right? I mean, that the previous film has traveled on West Shot. Yeah, Durango. Uh, okay. We've been in Durango and Mexico City a couple times and Cabo. <laughs> so, with, welcome. Guys. So, uh, first of all, could you tell us uh, what was the first approach uh, to the book? Uh, it was before you, you know, that you were playing the roles or after? For me, it was after. Uh, I got cast in the film a week before we started shooting, so I hadn't heard of the books, and then once we started shooting, I started reading the first book. Yeah. Okay. How about you? Uh, yeah, no, I read the script before I had any of the books, and um, I loved Richard McGregor's interpretation of the story. I was, I was so attracted to it. Um, that's where I came from. And then I read all of the books. Oh, really? After, oh, wow. after I read the script, I, I devoured all of the books. I loved them. Oh, wonderful. So, eh, bueno, vamos a empezar con la sesión de preguntas y respuestas. Eh, por favor, si levantan la mano y hacer la pregunta en español. Muchas gracias. Eh, buen día. Eh, si ah, le pueden... Ah, ok. Buenos días. Pido. La primera pregunta para ellos es, ¿qué es lo que les atrapó desde su personaje? Y eh, la segunda pregunta es en cuestión de qué piensan sobre las críticas que ha tenido esta película, si piensan que es eh, la exitosa saga después de la de Crepúsculo. Um, I, I was really attracted to the winner because um, I thought she was a character who started in strength and ended in strength, but um, began the story in strength that was built on insecurity and fear and ended it in a strength that was built on love and acceptance. Um, I have no idea about marketing. I really don't know about the saga stuff. It's not very interesting to me. I just like making movies. You know, I don't know. I don't think so. We just had a bit of fun. I uh, love my character in the books because she's a villain and I never get to play the villain before, so it was exciting for me. And uh, I loved her kind of brand of manipulation. She's kind of a cheerleader bad girl. Um, so I like the driving past cars and all the clothes and um, our writer-director is so smart with how he tells the story in such a mature, interesting, new, fresh way. Um, and so I loved it. And I get the comparison because we're both based on books, but I think we're very different things. Our, our film is, Hopefully you'll find very funny as well. Uh, yeah, I really, you know, the first thing, that, the reason I did the movie is because I like my character so much. I really loved his uh, ambition and restlessness and his desire to get something more out of life. And, um, and so I really enjoyed playing it. Uh, and uh, yeah, I don't know anything about all that other stuff. Sí, buen día. Eh, ¿Qué significa para ustedes si pudieran comentar sus experiencias de haber trabajado al lado de actores tan experimentados como Jeremy Irons o Emma Thompson, si nos hicieran favor? Gracias. Ah, uh, yeah, I mean, working with that level of of actor was really it brings you to another level, and um, I would go watch them on the monitor when I wasn't in scenes, you know, because it was like free acting class. Um, and I feel that, I just feel really fortunate that at this early part of my career I get to work with people of such uh, talent and uh, experience. They were so generous and kind to us. Those are, um, Emma Thompson is one of the funniest women I've ever met, ever, ever, yeah. I would like to change that statement, is the funniest woman I've ever met. So it was, it was incredible, I mean, I don't know what else to say, I just love them. I think they brought um, depth to the characters and um, playfulness too. Playfulness and humor, and um, it was fun to be around them and watch them. And everyone always says, you know, like, how is it to work with these legends and what did you learn from them? And I'm, we learned a lot, but I think at the same time, I feel lucky to be up here with these two young actors who 
you can learn from too. They have a freshness, they have a commitment to their craft, and they're smart and not jaded. Not to say that our older actors are jaded, because they're not, they still have fun. But I think that um, you can't underestimate younger actors and what you can learn from them, so I learned as much from you guys too. Hello, oh, buenos dias, Sorry, I put my earpiece in. How did you prep your character? How did I prep my character? Oh, well, I was just, you know, I got, I had very little time, so I was made, the first thing was just to get the accent. Uh, there's a very specific southern accent in the film. Uh, and learning that was pretty was was a challenge, but actually was really informative. Because what's cool about the movie is it really takes place in this very specific um, environment and culture. It, it 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 is all about the culture that it takes place within. So uh, learning about the accent, we had this great dialect coach named Rick Lipton, and we learned about Southern culture, Southern American culture, and why they speak that way, how their customs work, and everything like that. So that was really informative. Um, and then besides that, just trying to, you know, figure out who my character was, yeah. Um, for Vina, I just wanted to kind of connect with what was human about her, actually, um, instead of trying to think, you know, what the witch thing was. Because as a character, she's someone who is yearning to be normal, yearning to be human, so I wanted to find what those details were, especially since I know a lot more about being human. So, um, yeah, that's where I started and where mostly it remains. And I guess um, I tried to drive the car really fast and not die. Um, no, I read all the books and loved her journey, loved her relationship with Lena, um, and I just kind of I think a lot, part of the message of the film is that everyone has good and evil within them, and you get to decide what you harness. So I like to think that in my everyday life, I'm more good, but I definitely have that side, so I just try to tap into that enjoyment of my evil nature. Hi, guys. I'm Zachary, the Associated Press. I would like to know first, oh, first for a question for you, Amy. The Specialized Fashion Press has been great for you because of your style with the rest of this movie. I would like to know who are you wearing right now and what are you going to wear for the red carpet tonight? And for all of you guys, I would also like to know if you had the chance to spell a cast, what would it be in real life? Oh, um, I'd like to go on, I would spell cast Richard Branson so that I could go on the Virgin Galactic to space for free. Because it's super expensive. Cool. I really wanted to be an astronaut when I was a kid. Um, so that's what, I, that's what I would spell cast. Richard Branson, I'm coming for you. Um, I'm wearing Thomas Wilde and Renee K. Avila shoes. And tonight, I forgot. Oh, I think it's Zuhair Murad, I think. And Christian de Boutin. Uh, um, I'm wearing Vivian Westwood red and old shoes. Um, and tonight I'm wearing Givenchy. I think I said I've been trying to say that right for a long time, and I did it. I think. Shit. No, <laughs> um, no that's not really. It's, not okay. it's Givenchy. Uh, I. Uh, you want to know what I'm wearing? Uh, no, I. Uh, oh, spellcast. I like that. That's better than any of the things I've been able to come up with. The Richard Branson thing. That's really good. So I'm gonna just steal that. Yeah. I'm, I'm coming too. I'm gonna. We're all going to space. Yes. How? What's? Is that go? Is that like that? Like when? What's the timeline? You can do it right now. It's just like no. two million dollars. They have it. Have they done? Sh yeah. People go up. Are you just this, really this is rich people? Happening? Really, really rich people. Yeah. It's already happening yes, now. Yes, I believe it's happening. Oh my For the right God. price. Yeah. Or if you're a witch. <laughs> right. Sorry, next time. Hi, welcome. Thank so you. I was wondering if you three guys are ready for massive popularity. And Alan, are you especially ready? Because you're becoming like the next Robert Pattinson. Yeah. And 
<laughs> one, one question for you, Alvin. Have you read all the books that your char character talks about? Because they are great books. Yeah. No, I haven't read. Uh huh. What? Uh. What? Uh. So I I I read some of them. I read On the Road. Um, I read The Fountainhead. I read some of them. I read To Kill a Mockingbird. Um, yeah, there's great books. Alice had a great idea, which was to make a, a box set of all the books in the film and make that a, a uh, promotional thing. And in terms of popularity, uh, well, you know, I don't it's know. all speculation. I mean, yeah. it's just like, uh, <laughs> you know, we'll see. Like, you know, the most important thing is that people respond and, and like the movie. And so far, you know, the reviews have been good. People seem to like the movie. So we'll see. Yeah. I don't know about Robert. Robert Pattinson's like just started acting like a few years ago, right? So I think he, we don't need a new one yet. Guys, could you talk a little about the dinner uh, rooms? It was, yeah, our director, Richard LaGravenista, doesn't love special effects and oh, CGI, okay. so they built the room to do everything that you see in the movie, so it was really spinning. Oh, oh. And Alice and I had harnesses, and we were, we were strapped to poles on the floor, and we were taking Dramamine, too, which is like for seasickness. <laughs> so you were so sick. So it makes you very sleepy. <laughs> I didn't take any of your riches. Took some. I took so much. Do it. Yeah, it makes you kind of nauseous to be spinning, but we took, I took, she didn't take drugs. I took the seasickness drugs. How long it was to shoot you that? Let's say. Um, four days. Oh, really? I've been saying three, but I'm going to go three with four. Three or four. Felt never oh, wow. We were spinning for days. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and it was hard initially not to laugh. We'd both like look at each other and laugh because it felt like you were at like Six Flags Great Adventure. Spinning and trying to do this like caster girl fight <laughs> battle, so it's fun. Yeah. Aquí, Emi, yo quería preguntarte, bueno, cómo fue elegir este papel y dado que tú tienes ahorita una carrera también en televisión, qué es lo que te ha, si te ha alejado en tu serie de estar eligiendo constantemente más trabajos en en cine. Uh, well, I love my show. I love my, my family that I come back to every year on Shameless. They are, are really like my second family because you see them and spend, you know, a couple months out of every year with them. So I feel very lucky to have that. But I love working on films and I love trying different characters and I get a little restless. So this was the perfect treat because this character couldn't be more different than the one I play on TV. Um, and I just finished another film as well, a smaller film, so uh, no witches in that one. So, um, What's it called? What's it's called it? You're Not You, it's with Hilary Swank, it's a drama. And so I think for me it's just about choosing roles that are exciting. And this was very exciting because I never get cast as the villain. So I wanted to pray upon poor little Alice. <laughs> It was fun. They had me drive it really fast, and it was actually, we shot that on my first day on set, so I was very, I'm always very concerned on my first few days on set that I'm going to be fired and replaced, so my main concern was not to crash the car and therefore be fired. Um, so, yeah, they said drive it really fast, and I said, what if I crash it, and they said, we have to. And I was in the car with her at some point, which was very scary. <laughs> As I'm like driving one-handed with my arm around you. Right, and they cut, and she just kept driving. 